right, we're here with Matt Ryan, uh, who's talking about the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. I remember doing this. Yeah. <laughs> 10 years ago, it's already been 10 years, I, I remember doing it. It's crazy. Uh, I, I was shocked, you know, when I first got asked to, to help out, um, that it's been 10 years. Because yeah. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. I was out on the field of Flowery Branch uh, for the Falcons doing the Ice Bucket Challenge. Luckily for me, it was after the training camp practice, so it actually felt kind of good. It was kind of nice to, to get cooled oh, yeah. off. But uh, out here, creating awareness for that. Um, I know you guys are in Chicago, so uh, a good mutual friend of ours, Ryan Poles, GM of the Bears, and myself, uh, went to Boston College with Pete Fradies, who uh, suffered from ALS and you know we all saw we were all buddies with him and, and all saw the the kind of effect that it had on him and his family uh, and so all of us you know that, that were connected to that are, are all tied to this uh, initiative and trying to create and continue awareness for it uh, create momentum and continue momentum for ALS research and uh, you know hopefully hopefully we can do that today what's your favorite Ryan Pohl story uh, none for air, you know, yeah, <laughs> none for air. Yeah, no, Ryan, he's the man. And uh, he was a roommate of mine uh, for four, four out of the five years at, at BC. And just, um, he's just as steady and as loyal uh, of, of a friend as you could ask for. It's been incredible to see his journey to get to this point. He's a football guy through and through though. And so, I mean, I knew that three days into getting to know him that, that he was about football. His life was going to be uh, in that space, and he's maximized it. He certainly has his hands full uh, this this offseason, probably more so than, than anybody else uh, in the NFL, but he's certainly capable of, of uh, handling all of that. And, and in my opinion, has done a really good job of creating a foundation, of building it the right way. It's going to take some time, uh, but they played pretty good football down the stretch of that season, and uh, to me it was, it was impressive to see because we had them early on, and to see the growth that they had as a team and the improvement that they had, I think they're trending in the right direction. Knowing him as well as you do, he's got this incredibly tough decision, and, and Justin's this really likable guy, so they've, they've got a great relationship. Yeah. How do you think he'll you know, be, be able to just make the decision with a clear mind? Yeah, it's hard, right? It's hard when you have these personal relationships that develop, and, and you said it, Justin's a great guy, and, and um, very likable. Teammates love him, you know, everybody, I was up there for uh, practice and training camp, went up and watched him, and, Getting to talk to people in the building, just the way he is day in and day out. I mean, he's he's the kind of guy you want in the building, you know. But part of the responsibility, whether it's playing quarterback, whether it's being the GM, whether it's being the head coach, decisions fall on him, and it, it's it's part of the responsibility that comes with that. And and I don't think, um, you know, Ryan shies away from that. And I think he understands how hard it is, how difficult it is, how there is a personal level to all of this. Uh, but at the end of the day, his his job as general manager of the Chicago Bears is to push that organization in the direction it needs to go in terms of winning football games. And I think he'll determine whatever is best for them long term and, and make that decision, not hesitate. So he's got the nice side, he's got the he's got the hey, if I gotta be cut through it, I gotta do it. There's no question, yeah. right? And yeah. and um, that's that's just part of it, right? Uh, he's a good person uh, and a great guy, but he's not scared. And I think it comes across, right? He's quiet. Yeah. You know, he's he's not he's not out there. He's not going to be making a lot of noise, and so sometimes you see that quiet. You see it as like timid or whatever. That ain't him, you know. He had a good poker face. Yeah, that ain't him. He's yeah, he's got a good poker face. He, you don't know where he stands. He's always the same, right? Um, and not in a bad way, but just he plays things close to the best, and I don't think he's scared to make a decision. And the other thing is, I think he's really honest with players, and from the players' perspective, that's all you can really ask for, right? Is is transparency and honesty. Um, and, and I think he's done a good job with that. Let's talk about the other side of it, the player side of it. We just got done talking to DJ Moore, who's been very, very vocal. Like, Justin's my guy. You know, I hope Justin comes back. That stuff probably happens in some capacity every year on every team. So I guess the question I have for you is, if that's not how it plays out, what's that dynamic like in the locker room when they all get back at Hallis Hall in April, and how quickly can that sort of be repaired by the time you get into the actual season? I mean, that's the current state of the NFL, yeah. right? Is there's turnover on rosters. And so as a player, it's hard because, you know, you put all of this work in day to day with the guy in the locker next to you, right? And, and there is that level of, of loyalty and commitment to each other. And I think that, you know, it's hard. I mean, that's one of the difficult things as a player is, is to, uh, we, got a, we got somebody here too, but <laughs> it's one of the difficult things as a player is to be able to 
is to be able to move on from that. Oh my God! Yes, made it from up there as well, uh, which is good. So. Mm. Good to see you. Looking good, man. You Look good. You, you love here. You still look like you can play. I know. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm way too skinny. <laughs> way too skinny. Um, but getting back to that, that, that relationship is there, right? And, it, and it's hard as a player. But you have no other choice, right? You don't get to pick who the players are around you. You got to go to work with, with whoever is putting that seat next to you. So DJ has some experience in that. In a, in, in a certain way, I mean, he's played with how many different guys at the quarterback yeah, position and yeah. continue to be productive. I think he'll be fine regardless of whatever decision he's made. Do you think Justin's a fit in Atlanta? Yeah, I mean, could be, right? I think that um, when you look at the weapons that are in Atlanta and the guys that they have, and the way that Justin played, and this is why the decision is difficult because he played well down the stretch and he did a lot of really good things for them. I think there's, in my opinion, you know, you'd like to see a little bit more consistency first and second down in terms of accuracy, but Playmaking skills, being able to run the football, being dynamic in that respect. Yeah, I could see him as a fit now. Everybody kind of points to you as the starting point as the quarterback on a rookie contract. You were somebody that was able to come into the league right away and play well, and now teams try to follow that that formula. Yeah. You know, so when you talk about quarterbacks coming out now, like, do you think that's the right approach, or should it, you know, developing? How important is that to sit and watch? That's that's. That's the billion dollar question, right? Or the, the half a billion dollar question currently. I don't think there's one right way because you look at what Patrick Mahomes did in, in Kansas City and kind of sitting and, and getting some time to understand what he needed to do. You look at Jordan Love. I mean, you guys know it in division, sitting for a handful of years behind Aaron Rodgers and learning how to do it and then coming out and playing well this year and proving as the year went on. But then you also have guys like CJ Stroud or you know, even in my situation, coming in, being thrown into the fire right away. Personally, I love that. You know, I didn't want to sit. I, want, I wanted to be out there, right? I, I wanted to be playing, and I think I learned, you know, so much from from the experience on the field. So I feel like everything is skewed to, to your own personal bias. But I like playing. I like getting out there and going and learning on the fly. Matt, really appreciate your time and the insight, man. You got it. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate yes, that. Thank, Thank you guys so much. We all city like the mayor.